Today on Design, Build, and Fix, we're gonna show you how to install beautiful hardwood flooring. On a scale of one to 10, it's about a four. It's not as hard as you think. This series has three videos in it. Video number one is all about the preparation. Video two is the main installation, and video three is the finishing touches. So let's dive right into that video. Before we get started on the installation of our hardwood flooring, there's two things that we have to talk about that's going to directly affect the outcome of your project. First and foremost, you have to understand that prep work of the area before you install the hardwood floors is going to be extremely important. Mostly because it doesn't matter how well you put the hardwood floor down if you're putting it on a substrate that wasn't prepped properly. For example, Maybe you didn't pull out all of the staples that held the padding down and it caused your hardwood floors to lift up a little bit. The second thing is maybe you had some squeaks in the floor that you didn't prepare, uh, you didn't prep for by screwing it down to make sure you took those squeaks out and the list goes on and on and on. But you really want to make sure that you prep the area to the best of your ability to give you the best product. The next thing you have to be aware of is don't go and buy a inferior product when it comes to hardwood flooring. Don't go to, at least in my mind, like a lumber liquidator because what's going to happen is if you take a look at your hardwood flooring, it all has to do with how well it was milled. If the manufacturer uh, didn't mill it properly to their specs, they're just not going to throw it away. They're going to outsource it to a, a liquidation company because they're going to get some of their money back. And what you're going to find is a lot of times the widths of the boards are not going to be accurate. And if you have one board that's going to be wider than the other, you're going to have a gap. And if you have a gap here, two or three feet down, you're not going to have any gap and that board is going to bow in because those nails will actually cause this board to bend in a little bit. So you're also going to have to buy 30% more lumber or hardwood flooring if you buy it from one of those companies because it's liquidation. And you're not gonna be able to put two boards that are different widths together and get, a good, and get a good product. So make sure you prep work is great and make sure you buy good hardwood flooring. So let's jump right into showing you how to get this thing done. So now that the furniture has been removed from the room, you're gonna to wanna to take all the baseboard off. Lucky for me, I don't have any baseboard to take off because when I built the house 15 years ago, I knew I was gonna put hardwood floor down and I didn't wanna spend the time or the money to put it down. And uh, honestly, in that 15 years of time, I haven't really missed it, uh, but now it's time to put it down. But you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you cut the baseboard uh, at the wall to get the caulk joint gone and pry it off to get that gone. And uh, we'll show you how to do that Right now. Uh, one of the things you want to check is here because a lot of times builders will actually put a bead of caulk there. If there is a bead of caulk there you're going to want to score real quick so you don't pull off the paper off the drywall. Um, now I built this house so I did not put any on there so it's relatively easy to come off. Um, if you don't have a wonder bar which is one of these uh, you can always use a screwdriver to push it in here behind it and uh, get it off but you may mar the drywall so you may have to fix it. The Wonder Bar is a little bit better because it's got a wider end to it and so you're just gonna pound it down, push it out a little bit and then push it out Now one thing I would not save this, I'd put some new stuff up because it never looks the same uh, unless it's brand new. All right, so the first thing you have to decide is how you're going to deal with the floor registers that you have in your house. Now in this, in my house, 
Uh, I decided to actually use floor registers as opposed to registers that come out of the wall. If you have registers that come out of the wall, you really have no issues with your hardwood flooring. And mine actually stick out considerably about six to eight inches from the wall. And that's mostly because of the floor joists that are below. This area here, floor joists are 12 inches apart. Over here, they're 16 inches apart. That's basically because of the span of the floor. Uh, and we couldn't actually put those registers right against the wall because there's a floor joist there and there wasn't much space with the foundation below. So what we're going to have to do is I'm actually going to take those out and move those back and put new registers in so they're against the wall. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm not a big fan of the floor grates. And I'll show you why right now. Over here, when I built the house, we were going to put a wall here, but we opted not to do it. So it was too late to move this. Uh, but you actually have a floor register that pops out in the center. Uh, they're very beautiful. They're relatively easy to install. A little expensive. Uh, but over the last 15 years, they kind of get beat up because people walk across it and uh, kind of mess it up a little bit. Now, if you take a look, I'll pull this up. You can see that it's cracked. Uh, it is fixable. It's on my to-do list. Uh, but I don't. I do not want to have this option when I do it in the back room there. But now we have to deal with the the heat registers and the, and so we have options. The first option is to do nothing, hardwood floor around it, and then put these grates that came that we did with the house for the carpet. They make them wood style. You can stain them to match. You can paint them white because the molding's white. There's a lot of things that you can do, but they just drop in. You can open and close them. And uh, if you put it up against the hardwood floor, it'll sit right on top of it. Let me go grab a hardwood floor piece. All right, so we'll put our hardwood floor right up to it. And this could go right on top and set right on top like that. And if it, if it was wood and it was stained the same color to match, it would look okay. The biggest deal for me is that I'm not a big fan of these things because a lot of dust and stuff and all times of crap gets thrown down there or falls down there over the years and you got to keep cleaning it out. Uh, so not a big fan of that. If you have this situation and you want to use the uh, the one that's made out of the wood and insert it in, in uh, hardwood floor around it, that's probably a good bet. Um, if you want to just to leave what you have on the floor, that's fine and put the grates back in that were there. You could do that too. But for me, I'm not a big fan of the ones that fall in the middle of the floor, so I'm actually gonna push them back to the wall. So I'm gonna to have to move this and cut this out, and we're just going to move it back to the wall, leave it out a half an inch so the molding can go behind it, and then put our, our register there that actually hits against the wall. All right, so now that the baseboard is out and you've decided on what you're gonna do for your floor registers, you're gonna need a couple tools, a tape measure and a very, very sharp razor knife. And the reason you're gonna need the razor knife is because we're gonna cut the carpet and a tape measure to take out uh, carpeting. Yeah, you're gonna need that because when you take the carpeting out, you have to check with your uh, garbage person to find out what size rolls they'll accept this torn out carpet in. In our area, it's four feet. So I'm gonna go every four feet, cut it, pull it right out. So the only thing you're going to want to be concerned with is sometimes they staple in the center because I had the hole for the cold air return. Very, very sharp. So be careful with those. Process just repeats itself throughout the whole house or the whole room, so to speak. Then we'll deal with the pad here in a second. All right, so the padding is going to come out the same exact way, right along the same cut line. Just roll it up four foot width, just what our uh, garbage people want. The only thing we have to do is pull the staples. We'll show you that here in a second. All 
right, in order to take the tack strips out, you're gonna wanna put your wonder bar right where that nail is, because if you put it in between, it's gonna peel it up as many, many different pieces. And you really wanna be careful of these little nails are sticking up, they're crazy sharp. So just put it in here like this. Once you get it started, should pry right up and keep going. So now that all the carpet and the padding has been removed, we have to remove all the padding that's been left behind because there is staples that hold that on. And that's gonna be where the seams are and all the way over on the outside edge where the tack strips were that holds the carpet. So the best way to do that to get that to come out is grab yourself a pair of pliers, whether you use needle nose or other these uh, bigger pliers. Come over here, peel away some of the carpet, oh, there we go, and just put it on here and pull them up. And as you can see, you're gonna have thousands of these. And so I just leave them on the floor and sweep them up later. So now that we've removed the carpet, the pad, the tack strip, and all the little staples that hold the pad down and the pad, all of those things have been removed. It's now time to use a shop vac and clean up everything and make sure we got all those little staples out. And if you're gonna spend any time on your knees, make sure you have some knee pads on. It's gonna save your knees over time. So let's get through that and we'll move on to the next step. So one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do as you're vacuuming up all the floor with your shop vac is run your hand across the top just to make sure you got all of the staples that hold down the, the pad down and make sure any nails that may have popped up from the subfloor that's been down so you can hammer that down. It's gotta be perfectly flat. That'll make your hardwood floor uh, perfectly level, flat, and smooth and less likely to uh, squeak over years. So make sure you run your hand across the top to make sure everything's nice and smooth. definitely going to want to do that. I found five, six, seven, eight, nine of these things just in that small area that I did. So you're going to want to make sure you do that so you don't have any leftover staples. So we have a little bit more prep work to do uh, because we're going up against this tile floor that we've already put down. And I have to say 90% of the outcome of your hardwood floor insulation is in, is in the, uh, the prep work. So we want to make sure that this floor moves like it's supposed to and I'm coming over here and we want to have a quarter inch of gap between the tile and the hardwood. Now in this situation, it doesn't matter which way we're spinning it around, I'm just showing you for example here. In this situation we want about a quarter of an inch between the end of our hardwood and our tile to allow for expansion. I'm not too overly concerned about the expansion this way because wood expands this way, not with the grain. It goes across the grain. And so as you can see, we have a, a screw that's holding down our hardy backer board. And I can't back that out because if I back that out, it's gonna pop this tile up. So what I'm gonna do is take a screwdriver and a hammer, pound the hardy board around away from it, and then take a uh, a uh, hacksaw and cut that off. I got one to do there and one to do there and we're also going to have to come over here to this side. Now I had already cut this off where I knew the tile was going to end before I installed the tile but I didn't do it on this side. I'm not sure why but our hardwood floor is going to be this way and if I give myself a quarter inch a gap between our tile and our hardwood floor, as you can see, this sticks out almost a quarter of an inch. So we're gonna absolutely have no expansion for our hardwood floor. And what's gonna happen is that floor is gonna buckle up and you're not gonna be able to prevent that from 
from uh, expanding and contracting. Wood moves, you can't stop it. So we want to make sure that we prep this. So I got a lot of work to do to get this cut out. So I'm just going to chip away with it with a uh, uh, basic a chisel and peel those things off. Shouldn't take too long, but that's going to make this perfect because if that floor ends there, it's going to be a quarter inch and it'll expand and contract. So we got some work to do. So there you have it. I have all the sides cleaned up. I got those, the screw out there and the screw out there cleaned up and this whole edge is cleaned up all the way around. Now, don't rush into putting your hardwood floor down. Make sure you put the uh, time and effort into the prep work. It only took me about a half an hour worth of time. Not a big deal. Nice and straight all the way down. And now we're all set and we can start getting closer to installing our tile. All right, as you can see, the floor registers have been moved. Um, I've decided to not show you how to do or move the floor registers in this video. I created another video to show you exactly how to move those if you have to, and I've placed the link down in the description below for you to access that video. All right, so the next thing we have to do in our setup and layout of our hardwood flooring is to decide which way we want our hardwood floors to go. Traditionally, what is the best way is if your floor joists run this way, which in this house it does, you want to run your hardwood flooring perpendicular to the floor joists. So for instance, we want to run our hardwood floors this way because what it's going to do is it's going to span the joist. There's a joist there and there's a joist here. At this point, they're 12 inches on center and over there, they're 16 inches on center. This is going to give you the most support for your hardwood flooring. Now, can you run it this way? The answer to that question is you can, but you have more of a likelihood of getting squeaks. But the best way to do it is to put it this way so it's perpendicular to your floor joists. All right, so the next thing we have to decide, let's come over here, is we're gonna decide if we're going to have a full board as our start or we're gonna do a partial board. Now, one of the things that you really have to pay close attention to when it comes to uh, installing hardwood floors, especially if it's natural hardwood flooring, is you have to have appropriate expansion and contraction. That board right there is three and a quarter inches and they're saying that that board will expand about 1 64th of an inch per board. Typically, you're gonna find in an average room, you're gonna have about half inch to three quarters of an inch expansion and contraction on your hardwood floors. So you really need to account for about a half inch to three quarters of an inch at the wall. Traditionally, what I do is I usually leave it a quarter of an inch away from the drywall, just like that. And then what I do is I go back through and back cut the drywall so it's higher than the hardwood floor so it has the ability to expand and contract underneath that drywall and it's going to give me a total of three quarters of an inch on this side. That to me is going to be the best way. Now some of you are probably going to have baseboard that's already going to be sitting here. And so if you have baseboard, you're definitely going to want to make sure you're about a half an inch away. And then you're going to have to put some three quarter inch quarter round around there to cover up that spacing. Either way, you're going to want to make sure you have 
half inch to three quarters of inch expansion and contraction. Now, in this application, we have, over here, we have tile flooring. So our hardwood floor is gonna go here. Traditionally, what I normally do is about a quarter inch of expansion and, uh, expansion and contraction on this. But for this one, based on the size of the span, and right now we're at about 14, about 14 feet. Because we have a lot of expansion and contraction on that side, I'm gonna leave about 3 eighths of an inch on this side. And I think that's gonna do us our due diligence when it comes to the expansion and contraction. Because uh, it is gonna expand and contract both ways. All right, so now we got that underway. Now we have to decide if we're gonna actually be using a full board over there or we're gonna cut it. Because what you don't wanna do is to come over here and end up with a board that's gonna be three quarters of an inch or less. Uh, anything about an inch or so, and I even think an inch is gonna be too small. You wanna make sure that you have a relatively good sized board that ends up here. So we gotta do some math. I've already done the math and I've already done the measurements. <coughs> So let's go through and take a look at what I come up with. All right, so from the wall to here, we're at 169 inches. So what we're gonna do is do some math. And what I'm gonna do is, let me zoom in here so you can see my numbers. 169 inches minus the quarter inch of expansion and traction over there, over there because we have a half inch to the drywall, and I'm gonna cut the drywall out, which is gonna give us another half inch for a total of three quarters. But because I'm gonna start a quarter away from the wall, I'm gonna subtract the quarter. That gives me 168 and three quarters of an inch. Now over here, by the tile, right here, we're gonna leave three eighths of an inch, and I subtracted that out, that's gonna give us 168 and three eighths of an inch, or 168.375 in decimal. Then what I'm gonna do is take that number, take this number, put it in and divide 3.25. So that's the width of our board. That's how much space we have. That's gonna give me 51.807 boards. So 0 0.807 of a board, to figure that out, we take 3.25 times 0.87, which is gonna give us about 2.262 or about two and five eighths of inch board, which will end up here, which is more than enough. So we should have two and five eighths at the end, so that's gonna be okay. So the next thing we have to deal with is, it doesn't stop there, because the tile or the hardwood floor is gonna continue on, and it's gonna go all the way over to that wall, so we gotta find out what's gonna happen over there. So of course, I've already done the math, I already did the measurement. So that total distance is 215 and a quarter. So I'm gonna subtract the quarter inch expansion because I'm going to leave it a quarter inch away from the wall and I'm gonna cut the drywall out behind it. So it's gonna give me a good three quarters of an inch, which gives me 215 inches. Then what I'm gonna do is subtract the quarter inch on the opposite side because I'm gonna to, to cut the drywall again over there, which gives me 214 and three quarters, or 214.75. I do the division, 3.25 is how wide it is, that's our distance, it gives us 66.07 boards. So that means we're gonna be slightly over a full board. So if you take 0 0.07, multiply it by the 3.25, which is the width of our board, and that's gonna give us a 0.25, or 0.22 width of a board left over. Now, is that gonna be okay? Well, that, that means is we're gonna have a full board here, and they're gonna have another quarter inch slip here, piece here. I'm gonna be okay with that because that's gonna give me a half inch away from this, and my baseboard molding is a half inch, and I'm gonna be putting quarter round over top of it anyways, so that's actually going to work out. So I'm probably not even gonna put that .22 wide board in, I'm just gonna leave it off. And that's gonna give me a half inch over here, cut my drywall, and we should be good. All right, so if your numbers didn't work, for instance, here and here, because you have a board that's gonna to be too small, so to speak, 
we're going to be fine here. This was going to give us a quarter inch. We decided we're going to leave it off. If you don't have a bore that's going to be big enough, what you're going to have to do is on your start, you come over here to the board that's here, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to rip some of this off. So let's say, for example, you need to get a board that's going to be uh, appropriately sized on the opposite side. You may have to take an inch or inch and a half or so off of this board, off of every board along the start in order to give us the appropriate size that you need by the tile and by the wall. You just have to do the math and figure it out. And when you cut it, <laughs> don't cut the tongue side. Make sure you cut the groove side because all our boards are going to start this way and we're going to nail through the tongue to get those in. So you'll have to do a little bit more math than I had to do. Mine just happened to work out. If yours didn't work out, you're probably going to have to subtract some of it over here to get it to work on the opposite side. All right, so now we have to deal with the openings that we have in our floor from our old floor registers that we have. And I know that I'm going to put my hardwood flooring down in this direction and I am not going to cover those holes back up with subflooring. Reason being is I'm fearful that they're going to squeak. Mostly because along this edge where we're cutting it out there's no tongue or groove which prevents it from squeaking like you have over here on these seams. There's no tongue or groove so I have a fear that it's going to squeak. Plus our three quarter inch hardwood flooring is easily going to span that quarter inch and have no issues and I'm going to make sure that when I nail these down. I'm going to nail right on each side of the subwood uh, of the subfloor to make sure it's nice and solid. I'm going to do that for those three on this side. The one over here is going to deal with the same way. I am not going to cover that up because I know for a fact that we're going to have a full bore that's going to start here. It's going to leave me about a quarter of an inch away from the wall. Okay, and then I know that I can nail it right here, and then when we get another board, let me just move this out, that other board is going to be like this. It's going to span both sides, and it's going to easily be able to span that two and a quarter inch. Now, what I am not going to do is I am not going to leave a joint here in this open space. When I put this second board on, I'm going to make sure that I leave it away from here so I can nail a new board on here right on the floor joist. Then I'm gonna nail on the other side of that board on this side, which is gonna cause that to be nice and solid above that opening. All right, so one thing that I'm gonna to have to do in order to make our expansion and contraction work properly is we have to deal with these screws. Now, our hardwood floor is sitting on here and basically I'm gonna cut the drywall out uh, right on top of our hardwood floor. This screw is gonna be fine because that's not gonna prevent me from taking that drywall out. So I'm gonna take a slide this down and go to the next one. And you can see that that drywall screw is below the drywall. So what I'm gonna do is take my drill, bring it out, raise it up about a quarter of an inch. No big deal because we got baseboard molding going on here and I'm going to screw it in. All right, so now what we want to do is to make sure we have enough expansion and contraction and get some of this drywall out. So take one of your hardwood flooring pieces, flip it upside down, and set it against the wall. Take a utility knife with a new blade in it, and all you're gonna do is run it along there. Only takes a couple slices. If you go too high, not a big deal because what's going to happen is um, you're putting dry or you're putting baseboard over it anyways. Once you get to a certain point, take the board away. And I started here in the middle. I probably could have started on the end, but you're going to see that this is going to come out once it comes out as a full piece. Just clean it up a little bit more from underneath. Make sure your board slides underneath it, which it's going to, it slides pretty well. And don't forget to come back and chop back up the dust.
right, and you should be all set. You're just gonna follow that for the whole distance. All right, so before we put any hardwood flooring down, we have to prepare the subfloor a little bit more by putting some sort of a vapor barrier down onto our subfloor, which is gonna prevent the moisture from below coming up into your hardwood flooring. Most basements have a higher humidity level than the air that in the air in your main floor. And so you have to have some sort of vapor barrier that prevents that from sucking into your newly installed hardwood floors. For years, they've been always using a builder felt, uh, uh, roof felt paper. Uh, this looks like it's 15 pound. I've used this product in the past. And I've also used the 1.5 mil poly. Um, I'm not sure which one works better. Uh, I've done this three, four times, and I've done that once or twice. Um, I'm a bigger fan of the roofing felt. I think that's gonna do uh, a little bit better product than this because this is definitely gonna be 100% waterproof. This one is gonna give you a little bit more breathability. So for instance, if you have a area or a time frame where it's extremely humid, and it's gonna, that water is gonna, or that humidity is gonna absorb into your hardwood flooring. This is gonna allow that to breathe a little bit better. And this one is gonna trap all that moisture and have to come out over time. I think this one will breathe faster and it'll recover quicker. So in this instance, I'm gonna use the uh, 15 pound felt paper, and that is going to get stapled down with a, a hammer stapler. Do not use one of those where you have to click, click, click. That's gonna take you way too much time, plus you're gonna, your forearms are gonna kill you. This is a hammer stapler, you're just gonna whack it into place, and we're gonna put those things down. And we'll show you how to do that here shortly. All right, so now we wanna put our flooring underlayment down, our felt paper, so to speak. Make sure it's tight against the wall over here, runs parallel with our outside wall. Grab your hammer stapler. I do like to do it about every 12 inches, every 16 inches or so. Make sure there's no wrinkles in it. Come back. And we will cut this off. Now that we know where it's gonna sit, right at the wall. Some of it's gonna go underneath the drywall, which is fine. Now we have an opening here, and this is for the hardwood flooring for the, uh, not the hardwood flooring, but it's for the cold air returns. Tack it on both sides, and then you have to cut this out because we want the air to flow in here. So now we got this pulled out, stapled in. We have to deal with this opening we're just gonna cover up. This is our floor register. We have to open that up, so I'm just going to pull it past it. I'm gonna staple it, staple it down on both sides. I'm gonna feel where it is, take my utility knife. Open it up. All right. Pull it nice and tight. Back down, we're gonna continue that process. All right, now that we get to the end, you're just gonna fold this back a little bit. Cut it off along the roll. Hold it tight against the wall.
about all the staples you're actually going to need. Now we do have one more thing we got to do because we have a hole in the floor over here. This is where the hole in the floor was. Just take my pencil, kind of outline the floor based on its depression. And I know that there's going to be a staple on both sides of these things as far as our floor goes in. All right, so you can see that I only like to put down one layer of felt paper first. All right, so now what we want to do is to get our first row perfectly straight. And a lot of times these walls don't go straight, they bow in and out. So what we want to do is stay about a foot away from the corner. We're going to come out and we're going to measure three and a half because our board is three and a quarter plus our quarter inch gap. We mark three and a half. And if you're by yourself, you're going to have to run a chalk line. So just put a nail right on that inch and a half or the three and a half. come down to the other end. Mark three and a half. Then we're going to check our, run our chalk line. Put your chalk line on it. Pull it out. Come down here. Loosen it up. Put it right on that mark. Snap your chalk line, and if we check, we can see how far out we are in the middle. Yeah, believe it or not, it's three and a half, so time to put our first board down. Thanks for watching the video. Part number two is coming up in this three-part series on beautiful hardwood flooring installation. Part two is going to be the main floor installation. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Next video coming shortly.